What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is Third Person Podcast. I'm Chris. That's Mike. What's up? And as you can see, we have another third person with us. It's none yes. only than the mastermind behind the beautiful, beautiful costumes and everything that we see on Into the Badlands, Giovanni Lapari. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome right. to the show. Giovanni, uh, Giovanni's here, uh, and he's going to help us uh, break down a little bit of the costume design for the show. We're excited because uh, Mike and I have said from day one, you know, that the costume design uh, on the show has been outstanding and obviously since season two it's been even better and then in season three was like absolutely standout so we're so excited to have have you on here Giovanni thank you so much um and yeah we're gonna ask you some questions so uh we we got a bunch of questions from the Facebook group right yep uh they gave us a lot of different questions they're, they're very excited to, to to talk with you through us they have a lot of different questions um and uh yeah so we pared them down and we're gonna we're gonna let you just just spill it all out and let it all out there. Um, so uh, without any further ado, I mean, let's just get into start it. it. Start it up. All right. So, um, like I said, Mike and I we, we love these we love the costumes we love we love every everything that's been going on. Uh, you know, we've read the articles that you've um, of the interviews that you that you've done with um, on the internet and stuff like that, and you know, gave us a really cool background as to to where you started with all that stuff, uh, you know, getting into fashion design and, and costume design and all that stuff. Um, but for Into the Badlands, one thing that we that we kind of realized is that these costumes are essentially characters of their own, right? Right. And um, so first question is, did you make these costumes for the character or were the actors, did the actors help you create these costumes the way they convey their character? You know what I mean? This is a very interesting question because um, it, it changed. It's very, very interesting question. It changed a lot between season two and three, mm -hmm. only because of season three, which was my second season, I knew them. Right. So they helped, even not helping, because I knew them already. I knew their body shape and everything. Yeah. So that was a big help because I knew who was wearing what and how. So that, you know, literally automatically went in my head. Um, the season two was, you know, different because I just got to know them. Although there was another season, I could watch what happened. But basically, yes, you need, you need to think if you know who are the people you're designing for. And most of the time you do know that helps a lot. Yeah. Okay. If you don't know, it's you guessing that that will work out when the body and the person comes in at fitting room. So the adjustment and the work you do in the fitting room can be a major um, alteration, not because you made it wrong, because you need to adjust to that, yeah. you know, face, to that, you know, anything, That's anything right. can be adjusted. So when you see it, usually I walk away, I wait until the assistant and the seamstress dress the person and I get into the fitting room because I want to have, I want to have a shock <laughs> good or bad, I want to have an impression of what I did, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they do help a lot. Um, with some of them, we had a, an amazing relationship, and that took and it took a lot of bad work out of the way. You know, oh, yeah, good. He really, you see these things hanging on the hanger, and then you see, oh my God, what did I do? And then <laughs> they wear it, they brighten up. You know, they really make these things alive. Wow. And when you see them on the storage, they're just pieces of fabric, you know, fabric hanging. Yeah, so it goes hand in hand. Then it's like yeah. I created this thing, but I've created it for this person. So when yes. they meld together, that's when it comes yeah. to life. Yeah, that's so yes. cool. It comes to life. You just said it. Yes. Yeah. Those so like the promo pictures when season three started, and AMC put the promo pictures of the characters. Yeah. You know, I immediately went and grabbed those and put them on my computer just to have them because on that gray backdrop and just seeing, it's especially so vibrant, the color is so yeah, and vibrant. especially seeing like Cressida and and um, Pilgrim, like those because those are new and Nyx and Caster, like these, I was blown away. Like those, those were such amazing yeah. images to see yeah. the costume, and it, it, I mean, you know, that work was absolutely amazing. Yeah, this kind of it kind of goes perfect into this next question, um, Daniel and Sherman told us several times about how their costumes are made to be moved in obviously with the fight sequences and this and that um what's the process for you that goes into making the costumes functional for for the actors to take care of business in their scenes and this is uh this has been the challenge mm -hmm. yeah um, this is i 
even if I knew that, you know, at the beginning of the season two, that that was very important, I didn't, I haven't realized how important it was because these, those are like dancers. These people yeah. move right. more than you ever think. It's like a designing for a ballet and like for the opera house. They literally need to have as much as a, a possibility of moving. It's not, so I started designing, uh, especially in the season three, considering all the materials and the design, like especially there's like special cat, you know, seam, mm -hmm. and they go specifically in places. So they've been incorporated in a part of the design. There was no longer just adding a piece of elastic fabric under, you know, the arm. Yeah. It became a part of the design. I actually it ended up helping the design. Yeah, yeah. Because, I, because of that. Did, um, was it something that, uh, have you ever done that before in, in costume design? Never. Oh, cool. So that's, no. so that's cool. You got to. We got to a, a challenge of fixing and sorting something out and became a helpful thing to make a better design. Because I would never thought of making so many pieces out, out of a jacket of a coat. But I had to do it using multiple fabrics and material. Mm -hmm. It became part of the design. It was no longer like something I wanted. Because you could not hide these things in a special spot, as you would do, you know, at the beginning. Let me hide a piece of, uh, you know, elastic fabric here, and then it was not enough. So it became part of it, and especially Daniel and Sherman and everybody. Yeah. All of a sudden, I had it's to just jackets and every, it's very, it looks very heavy. The leathers and all this, so it's even the with the widow. Like it, it doesn't look like it's a it's a costume so much as it's just functional. And yeah. and you know, like Sherman said, in Ireland. You know, this past year it was cold, and they, and it had so not only did it have to be functional, it had to be warm, right? Yeah, yeah. There was a lot to take up, and especially because season one was shot in Louisiana, <laughs> a lot of sleeveless there, stuff, and yeah, yeah it was like the bowler hat. There were like you know these people, they like like shirt and like a, a waistcoat, yeah. and all of a sudden they come to Ireland. Mm -hmm. So we needed to make not a big jump from between seasons, style wise, look wise. Right. Yeah. And a lot of like um, regal uh, outfit, like the widow, you know, or like Baroness Chow, they need to look regal, they're very important. And then you would do that historically with like a velvet or very heavy material if they have a train of something. But here we needed to use material, then they could like, you know, move with, uh, with them. Mm -hmm. And so you should have, you know, I had needed to find a way to give the same feeling of something very regal, but with a lighter material, with yeah. soft material and you know elastic as well something they could move in it was oh, everything you had in mind you needed to make for the badlands badlands wanted to have his own its own you know uh, materials and things and cats you could not use anything for rental usually you can rent from costume houses there was nothing that could have been used it was everything made for the show uh, the and, and, and again yeah and i guess it had to look like it was like you said, from the Badlands. It can't Absolutely. be, you know, so functional, warm, from that territory. Like, yeah, you get, you definitely had a challenge. And, and again, I, I, I can't say it enough. Like, I just, I'm just, just thinking of, like, say, Pilgrim, all of the yeah. intricate stuff that, that doesn't overpower. That's the best part. Like, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, we're not costume designers or anything, but we watch a lot of movies and a lot of TV yeah. and you see a lot of, and it just looks like it's functional, um, not in movement, but even just why it's there and, yeah. and ornamental. There's a place. Oh, and the colors too. The colors of the color palette was fantastic. I have to say that the showrunner played a, a big game into the crit, you know, the, make that very creative oh. uh, especially miles miller really and the script do you, you really want to have a show then it wasn't like uh, gray and black as a lot of people a lot of other shows they do they really wanted to have a color popping constantly yeah so all the color palette that each baron had you know we needed to make sure they all became very distinctive each right. oh, i think you nailed that i think we, yeah. we both enjoyed tilda the iron rabbit costume Oh, but all was, of a sudden, yeah. I said, Miles, we're running out of colors here. What we <laughs> next? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It was that we're starting to literally running out of the, you know, distinctive 
uh, form because they all need to look different, especially when they fight to each other. You need to know yeah, who are against what. Yeah. The pilgrims are the only group of uh, people that they actually gather more colors. Each co They actually did not have distinctive colors. They own everybody because oh, yeah, it's yeah. the oldest... They are the oldest cultures. They come from far, from everybody else. So they own shapes and colors. So we could mix shapes and colors as anybody barony. Yeah, yeah. So we we're just speaking about the different the different colors for the characters in the costumes. Um, how about the 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 symbolism? Um, this is so. This is coming from uh, Rhonda, Mark, and Kevin off of the Facebook group, and they, you know, we, you touched on the colors. They want to know about. Um, what inspired the symbolism for each of the, the groups of people? Um, and as far as the reference materials and sources, like what was your starting point for all that coming into the show? Right. About the symbol and the insignia, if, however you want to call it, that all came from season one. So in the way it was decided ahead of the writing what each group should have had okay, right. as a symbol. So I'm not sure about how to answer to that. This is okay. more like showrunner thing okay but they decided to give it um i'm not sure about um, as i said about what was the idea who inspired that um the materials i can answer about colors and materials yes of course so we started it depends if it was uh if it was like you know the the, the clipper who belongs to quinn instead of like, you know other barons and everything so we and and Harry, uh, we had um already something from season one who came mm -hmm. And then I adjusted to whatever was the new barons who came in. Do you know what I mean? Some, some, they like textures. The producers always wanted to see thing happening, you know, then yeah. this is a, they'll be wearing, it comes from, you know, from whatever they had at disposal at the time, you know? Yeah. So texture was very important to see what the lights will read on the costumes. The camera wants to be fed constantly. They want to yeah. see what's going on. Uh, so texture was the main thing. Um, and so the colors. Very cool. Okay, cool. What do you got? We What's have next? Um, from, this is a, kind of a two-parter. Uh, it's from Brigi and Cool Guy J. Um, yeah. Whose costume do you feel uh, is the most difficult, challenging to design? Um, and what costume is the most personal to you that you've designed? I'm really glad that or evolved. <laughs> um, and in general, I would say... The, I pretty much um, was happy with all of them. They're like your kids. So at the end, you kind of like them all, unless you don't really. Uh, luckily, <laughs> I did really feel close to all of them. Um, but I think I liked the most the ones who uh, come easily out. The idea then come quickly out of me. Because I think there's a lot of intuition and instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, if you start overthinking, as for everything, uh, they they lose a bit of like you know it's the, uh, like intuition. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of costumes that I do like because they came, the idea came really quick, and I saw them you know like quickly out of it and were amazing. The ones that it's been struggling a bit more, they are the ones I actually I do like less. It's <laughs> very personal. It's nothing to do with the way they look. It's just the process. Yeah, because yeah. somewhere inside you, and you need you need to go fish them. You know, you need to actually go get that idea. And this show visually is very demanding. Mm -hmm. It's constantly something that nails. You know, and then you have to go from a certain level, and then you have to grow higher and higher each episode. So where I learned was to not shoot the the strongest ideas and on episode one, especially last season with like sixteen episodes. Yeah start pacing myself and saying I'm going to start in a certain way to then give myself room to get until the end. Right, okay, each, yeah. So each character, we need to sh we need to shoot them in the way that they, the, the thing grows, you know, the whole profile and it goes in a certain direction. Yeah. It was literally trying to see what's going to happen next. Yeah. You don't the beginning. Yeah, you don't, you don't know, right. Right. So, uh, which costumes? Like, there are many I liked, and uh, more than the others. They're not necessarily being worn from the lead or other people. There's the. It's a very personal thing. Whatever came quickly out of my head, mm -hmm. this is I like the most because I feel like they're very fresh. You yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you said, the easiest thing. 
right? Cool. Um, what, uh, off the top of my head, I just, as you're talking, um, as you're reminiscing now about these costumes, were there any costume like faux pas or little mishaps that you found, um, like funny that like, it, okay, this, this thing happened and it sucks, but it was kind of funny though. Is there anything like that? Like on the set, like, oh, this, uh, I don't know, something, a sleeve fell off, but it looked funny <laughs> on camera or something to that effect. Was there anything like that? I think it happened several times. Yeah. <laughs> More than once. I think something, uh, I think in the long process of making and creating like costumes, I think I, more than that, I got, uh, we, we had a really big uh, costume shop with like a lot of tailors and seamstress. So sometimes looking at them in the distance making things, I would stop them and say, this is actually way better than I thought. So mm. I would actually, really get inspired from them making things yeah so more than funny uh, i would say that inspirational uh, several times i got inspired of something that came out wrong or they might call me and say giovanni sorry this is a, i didn't cut it in the right way i'll do that again and i would say oh wait a minute that might works better oh. so i got a lot of help by accident Oh, well, you learn, learn by our mistakes, right? I guess that's what happens, yeah. So those accidents actually were used, and they became part of the design. That's yeah, cool. Well, that's how you know you have a great team. Yeah. That, I love that. I love because one brain can only make it that much. Yeah, exactly. I always say to Miles Miller, if there's another season, I don't know where I'm going to do. You're going to change me, you know, with someone. <laughs> yeah. Because that, it's over. Yeah, yeah. You know, you literally. You can't think of you can't then you can do everything all the time. And the help of the people around you, you start learning who can help you and how and when. Yeah. So this is a very good question. Some most of the times some several times I saw something then it wasn't quite uh, what I asked but then it became uh, way better than I thought. So I'd say this is uh, like uh, it goes for a lot of people that we work with. We had over 50 people in the department. That's wow, wow. that's cool though big department wow very cool well you need it and it definitely shows Thank um you. sure uh okay so next one uh this come this one also comes from cool guy jay um so you've worked on some big name shows like rome okay. the borgias uh penny dreadful um how does your experience differ um from working on into the badlands and having to create uh the fashion for the post-apocalyptic world this is a uh, very interesting because uh, Into the Badlands is something on its own. When you work on a, a historical period pieces, um, you have books and references. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure tons and tons, right? Yeah. And so what you do, you read that using uh, a certain material. So materials instead of others. So each designer would look at the same book. Oh, yeah. And would do a, the whole different thing. So this is your own personal... Uh, the way to look at things, right? And so you basically translate something. You so you look at the same painting, right, mm -hmm. of the same you know a fresco, and you make something. Badlands wanted to have all these things. So in the Badlands, you need to look into a fashion. You need to look at a, a magazine. You need to look at the history books. You need to look at everything and decide for one direction. So this is the scary thing. Yeah what direction I'm going to go and w will I like the direction I'm taking what this direction is going to take me yeah so it's the freaking thing at the very beginning of a show like that where I'm end up going and I, would I like that you know if it's too far so as you go you learn and you you build a world and you start looking around and then you might like that and you can slightly change if you don't like that yeah. so you have to trust that you will know things on the way yeah. you can't know everything at the beginning and if you do Rome and if you do Penny Dreadful is an 1892 and <laughs> and you look at it and you have it yeah a lot of uh, great designers they are afraid of working on not period pieces because mm -hmm. they say what am I going to do yeah yeah uh, I, you know likely I didn't ask myself that <laughs> I just did it yeah was it That's how was it um so you came in on the second season. Do you yeah. think it was beneficial to walk into 
a situation where you all where costumes were already created, characters were for the most part. I mean, only six episodes, but still established to a point. W was that beneficial to you, or did you go back to the drawing board and redesign everything? I like every single question you guys have. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. I th I think I've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I said, I heard a lot of uh, costume designers that don't like to step in season two because, you know, there's not enough freedom. But in this particular show, there's too much freedom. <laughs> yeah. It's like starting a, like a white page blank. You need to start. So I could watch season one right, okay. and see what happened and know the actor's face and then they, where they weren't. So we got a lot out of that. And they did an amazing job. Although yeah. I heard it was very difficult because it was a season one and they had to make all these happening. Yeah. So for me, it was the most beneficial thing. I would never been lucky than that. Yeah. And then we added up, we added up thing, but we had a base, you know, of something that happened in the season. And for me, it was the best thing ever. I would never want to start that season one. Cool. So yeah. luckily. Uh, my colleagues did, did an amazing job in season one. Yeah, and they, you had a bit of a foundation already. Yeah, a you can just build off of. Very much, very much. Yeah, cool. Um, not only in the Badlands, but other shows that you've worked on, have you ever created a costume for uh, an actor that you were excited and nervous uh, to work with? Um, if I had, a, if I had like pressure by having to do, yeah, someone, perhaps like, it's a. Yeah, on any of your jobs or any of the yeah. shows you've worked yeah. on, have you ever had to create a costume for somebody that you were, like Mike said, a little bit nervous or, or perhaps maybe even starstruck? You know what I mean? Some, for some reason, I do only feel that when the actors come in. So I don't feel the pressure because I just isolate myself in the world of trying to have something, luckily. Mm -hmm. So this is a pressure I don't have before I see them. But then the, the time then they, it comes when they get in. <laughs> and uh, I have to say that some of them they really know what it's uh, important to wear and they they show you that they have a knowledge of mm -hmm. the reason why they tell you things for example uh, with Cressida yeah. we had one and a half and I'm not kidding 90 minutes conversation before we start wearing anything oh. we had a one and a half hour of talking and I realized she was getting off the chest, everything she's been thinking about the character. So she wasn't really telling me exactly. She was trying to, you know, thinking loud. Mm -hmm. But it was very interesting because I learned so much in that amount of time. Yeah. And so I decided to face the thing differently. So we went out the fitting room and we went looking for fabric together. Oh, wow. Some of actors, they can't face and I understand reason to have something like through it on their face. You wear that one and you go. Yeah. Some of them, they need to have the time to digest that. Yeah. You know, they need to have time to see what's, you know, how you build. Some people, they need to time to, to have these things build with them. They need to be behind this process of creating because they feel it's it becoming their skin. They have That's to great. wear it. They have to feel comfortable or uncomfortable, but they mm -hmm. want to know that. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Great to, it's great to see that they have the input. And I liked it. You'll take I that. Yeah. Ready? And I said, get that out of the way. We'll start over again. No, oh, that's mm -hmm. great. And I loved it. It took ages to get to one point, but she's been wearing that for the whole show. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. And it looks great. Her costume, again, yeah. every, whenever you see the character, when, when, a, when, when they pop up in this episode or that episode and you look, it's just, yes. That's them. There's nothing out of place. Yeah. They belong there. They belong wearing nothing what they're wearing. It looks overwhelmed. It doesn't look forced. It looks very natural. Yeah. And it looks real. And, to and this that's world. coming from two guys that just, you know, do YouTube <laughs> and watch TV. You know what I mean? I really appreciate that. It's, it's effortless. It's, yeah. It looks effort. It, it, it's like hearing, it's like, it's like watching an American Idol show and some no name person has a beautiful voice. It comes out effortlessly, and you're like, "Oh, that's a singer." Yeah. You see this stuff, and it's like, "Yes, that's yeah. what that belongs." Well, everything there, goes yeah. hand in hand too. Not only just the costumes, but just the just the backdrop, the landscape of yeah. the world, and the hair. That right. you know, it, it all it all is. Yeah, you you you, know. you have input to with, obviously with the hair too, right? Because it's a part of the you, whole you, thing, no? Usually it is more, and the Badlands happen less, but since we've been working together previously, 
So we c on the back of your head, you, we will know each other. So some, <laughs> especially hair and makeup requested most of the time pictures of the fitting. So without even me having literally going to say anything, they just looked at it yeah, yeah. and they decided to shape. So they have the complete, the 100% the credit of, of everything happened. Oh, so yeah. they wanted to see the shape and the colors and they would adjust to it. Sometimes they would come over and ask for a scrap of fabric and pieces just, you know, to keep using it. Yeah. I have to say it's been the most uh, wonderful way to work together with talking to each other like once a month because the time was uh, the main and the main enemy. Yeah, yeah. The time is what it really each actor you need to make that look four or five times or more because there's like several stunts. Mm -hmm. You go through the hell of killing and dying, and you know, you cut them, you put wires and everything. So each look had to be good but also multiplied. Yeah, wow. So the time was the main enemy, but even because of that, we didn't have a lot of time to talk, but they really looked carefully at the costumes and they did an amazing work with the hair pieces like their amazing work yeah kudos everybody yeah, yeah. It, it, everyone even, even sherman and daniel even say that too that's yes. a camaraderie with everybody from from this person to this person you know the, the drivers and 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 catering yeah. and then and then hair and makeup and costume like yeah they they both said it, it's been such a joy Yes. You know, it actually almost brought Sherman to tears. He said how how beautiful and wonderful yeah. it, uh, experience that he's had to work with with you and everyone on the show. Yeah. So it's 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 so cool to hear. It's wonderful. Yeah, that they 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 really talked about how there's no one on the set that they don't necessarily you know dislike mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's yeah. a, it's it's a family kind of a thing, especially yeah. as the, as the seasons go on, and we hope it goes on for a long time. Um, that bond will only only grow uh, greater and, and stronger. And I'm sure the works that you're going to be putting out and the designs are going to be um, phenomenal. Um, talking about um, just just the arts in general and just what makes up the show um, as a whole, there's several competition shows on, on television with makeup and, and hair and this and that. Um, could you ever see um, like a reality competition for costume design? I would I would say so. Why not? I think there's a lot of people who are actually interested in see how thing works. No, yeah, I think yeah. it would it would feed a lot of questions and it will you know attract also a different um, uh, audience to the movies and to TV. You know, that's like a lot of people might learn they want to do that job. Yeah, yeah, it's like but Face Off. I don't know if you're familiar with I Face Off it, yeah. on <laughs> Sci-Fi, and they make the the yeah. fan, you know. Yeah. Cut, yeah. Uh, so, so what you're saying is, is that when this show gets created, Giovanni's going to have to be one of the the, the guest judges <laughs> or, or a full <laughs> judge on the show. And because that happened because of you. Oh, like the kind of X Factor thing. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I'd be happy to see that because I think it would make a lot of people thinking about what they want to do as well. You know, sometimes young, you know, young people, I'd say, sometimes you run out of ideas and it could be very much an ed educational thing. Absolutely, it's yeah. It's a good job and it can be learned. Yeah, and it's drama. It's good drama too. It's like... Yeah. The, the you know the the the, the yeah. pressure to create something you know but yeah. sp speaking along those lines I, I have a, I have a question for you Please. we've seen a lot of stuff in the Badlands we've seen you know Regents and Clippers and and Cogs and all this stuff we haven't seen the people in that world that are are the ones who make all this stuff when when are we going to see a cameo from you on the show creating um, some of this stuff and and in addition to that. Which Baron would you want to work for? I mean, okay, season three, we're only looking at two Barons. But if you yeah. had a Baron that you would want to make the costumes for, I'm sorry, the uniforms at this point because yeah. we're in the show, yeah. who would that be? I never thought about it. And actually, I'm thinking about it the very first time. What would I want to be with? Uh, let's say I, I wouldn't want to be like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to wear something that I'm not going to get cold mm -hmm. and rainy. So I would go, I think... I think I would like to be uh, one of the uh, the Baron Chow Clipper. Okay. One of the white guys. Yeah. I think so. Those those I like those those uniforms to me. Well, like he says, they're very regal too. Not so only are they like, regal, but a presence. Oh, and, the, and yes, and the and the design, but the way they fit, I I I, I it, it speaks to me when I see them on screen. They're because they're different than the bowlers, and they're different than well, yeah. Quinn's, Quinn's Clippers are no longer around, but. They had the sleeveless and they had the, you yeah. know, but like 
but Chow's Chow's army is they're very it's yeah. all long sleeves. Yeah. I don't like, believe they have hats, right? But it's just it's just tight and the belts and it I just it speaks to me. I love that it, they're clean. Even when they're dirty, they look clean for some reason right? to me. You know, <laughs> yeah. I really I, I particularly like that one that design because it became a concept of the retro futuristic code. Yeah, so look at certain movies made in the sixties, then they looked at the future at the time. So it was a futuristic point of view in the 60s. Yeah, no, yeah. Like a, a, no, a polo neck and this kind of thing. Yeah. So that was very interesting to see how they would look uh, now, and you know, 2000 or, or something, 40 or 50 years ago. So yeah. they called it for futuristic. So I've been looking at some of those movies, and I said, I like that idea to offer that. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that in uniform, it's inspired of like the fence fencing. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's what it comes from. Seems yes, like yeah, exactly. Yeah, there it is. That, yeah. I was. I, I. I. don't know why. It I does. It does look much and, like and, a And and I guess now that I'm thinking about it, I've always. I've never taken up fencing, <laughs> yet. You know, I'm still a yeah. young a young pup. I could probably <laughs> do it eventually. But yeah, that it. I always liked that type of uniform, and now I'm picturing the mask right. on um a child yes, clipper, right? Yes. right? I got it from there, and yeah. this is the thing. That's what I'm saying. This show, you can copy everything exists yeah. you need to take it so mm-hmm. there's a lot of images then you realize and i didn't know that it really yeah. put me in touch with my creative process then i didn't know that yeah cool they're leaving the back of your head and then all of a sudden you you know you pull them out of nowhere yeah. so i really really like the costumes not because they're more beautiful than others because i was very proud of this uh, idea yeah of fancy uniform yeah. You know what? It also informs, actually, I, I feel like it also informs their fighting style, too. Yeah. And that's cool, too, because yeah. now the more I think about it and I think back to these fights yeah. with them and, and, you know, even when when Sonny wore it, that was right. great. What was that like to put that on Daniel? That must have been cool. He hated it. Did he? <laughs> Did like, he really? He said nothing. He's worried about I, everybody's cussing. He, he said zero. But then a year later, he confirmed that. <laughs> don't like it at all like and white what am I, because white is not a nice not easy color to use either to yeah, wear you yeah. don't want to wear it you have to decide it's a summer or something so he <laughs> must have hated it i think and but also he, he were wearing all the you know all the gold and everything it was like oh, a, yeah, know, it, was yeah, it was great it was great i think he must have hated at the end of the season two i met him in la in the office and and he said that he got a lot of compliments mm-hmm. <laughs> That's where you gain the trust. Yeah. He got a lot of compliments on the thing he must have hated the most. Wow, yeah. And talked to me and said, I can't believe I got that much out of that. Because mm-hmm. must, everybody must have seen him in, like, in white, with his beautiful face and everything. And yeah. so it was in red or dirty and something. So that must have made a big change. And they, and they went to tell him. So he came and talked to me and said, oh, my God. And I said, all right, <laughs> just give me, give me a chance. Right, Sonny was the one of the one of the lucky ones, able to wear every yes. Oh, that's con- true. Yeah. Different costume he's wore the widows uh, blue gone. and, and <laughs> Quinn's red. That's true. And, yeah. yeah. Oh no, are we are we gonna see him in in Pilgrim's <laughs> Crimson's? Oh no. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Pilgrim's is very. Uh, it's, sure about that. Yeah. It's a lot of greens and uh, blues and oranges. He's and... gone through. Uh, also disguised himself into the bowler hat people for a second. You know, so mm-hmm. he crossed uh, a lot of the barons. Yeah. Let's see, see where it goes next. Yeah, oh, I can't. We can't. He's a corner also. Yeah, we we can't wait. Um. So okay. So I think I think that's all of all of the questions that we we've, we've gotten from the from the community. Uh. So we we spoke with Sherman. And, um, you know, we, 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 he was on our, uh, he was the first guest we had on our, yeah, on our new trivia show that we have, right? We're doing an Into the Badlands trivia where, yeah. you know, to, to, you know, just help promote the test show. Test the knowledge, yeah. And test everyone's knowledge. So Sherman did, so we told him we were going to speak into you, and he told us a little story about a time when uh, you guys were, I think, were snowed in, and him <laughs> and Lewis were trying to find your house. They said they Ubered to your neighborhood. <laughs> Oh and they and they were looking for your house and they they just ended up in the middle of the street yelling help help <laughs> and then you showed up at the window and so can you elaborate on that oh my god oh my god sherman it's endless a surprise yeah i said guys why don't you come over mm-hmm. and then out of the blue i don't know i go 
looking out of the window. I didn't know why. I wasn't <laughs> taking in anything. And then see two dressed in black figure and the disc because it was all white. Yeah. <laughs> so I see these two dressed in black, both you know, from top to bottom, just wandering around trying to find someone's apartment, you know? <laughs> and, they were, and they were saying, Help, we're freezing, help, help <laughs> and there was Sherman, you know, like it was they were freezing. Like they didn't know where they were going. So luckily I saw them and told them to come over. Wow. <laughs> Set by the fire, you know, fire. and but it was amazing. It was they were like freezing. And in Ireland I've been told it does not snow. Wow. Never snow. So the whole city didn't even know how to deal with that because they don't get you know, they don't get snow. Oh, sure. one of those situations, yeah, where the city shuts down when it snows because they don't know how yes, to deal with it. Yeah. They didn't know how to deal with that. So That's the whole city said we're not dealing with that. You guys are not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. In the house, in the apartment. But Sherman has been the guy, the gentleman who, every time he was going to training, you know, like at, to the gym we, we had in the studio, he would pop by and sit down and have a chat with me. Yeah. So that became a lot more different than just work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you live in this place and then people would come over. And what, they, I have a picture of, like, all, like most of the cast once uh, the, the widow and uh, Emily, she sat down on the, at the desk of my desk and making me, making Giovanni, make the designer and make my impression. And they all start wearing hats all of a sudden. I was like, <laughs> they would hang out in there like, all the time. I would go in and out just for no reason, just for, just they found comfortable being there. It's like when everybody go to the kitchen instead of sitting in the living room kind of thing. Yeah. So they all come and stay. And that made me very happy because I realized somehow they felt like they were safe for them to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I absolutely. don't feel that and I felt very happy. Man, that's it's, a, it's, a, it's a family. It's, it's a family. Yeah, that, yeah. That's Do you know what I mean? Like, it felt yeah, like no. it's very nice. You feel blessed that someone decided just, to, they will talk their thing and then just hanging out in the office and just stay there and feel safe and then they will, they will go, and they will come. The old ADs, if they didn't see them around, they would just come and pop in and see if they were there, right? The drivers wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes they will come and check and there was nobody there. Say, so, oh, they're already gone. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it became a very easy to be together. So when they were coming for a fitting of anything, it was like easy. Yeah, it was just fun. It was just hanging out. Yeah. That's trust. It makes it feel a lot less like work. When and there's it, nothing, it's... yeah, more than just be trusted. Really? Yeah, yeah, That that's fantastic. That I think that's a great place to end it. Uh, it what do you yeah. think? That, yeah, you, I, I think I think we picked your brain enough. Uh, yeah. Giovanni, you've been an absolute delight. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I appreciate it. I found your message a month later. <laughs> that, you right. know what? I, I can't I, believe it. That's okay. That's I put okay. it out there. We put it out I there, and we said up. he'll find it, and we when the time's right, he'll on, get to yeah. us. And then he had to apologize for being yeah. un, you know, rude and not having even checked that. But I'm yeah. really happy he gave me the time because I really saw you guys the interview, and, and I really I was really excited about it. So well, thank you for that. That's great to hear. Absolutely, no absolutely. Thank you, thank Giovanni. You. Where where can people find you on the internet? Um, like uh, Instagram, Instagram, socials, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mainly Instagram, okay. Giovanni Lippery Design, and then there's like a Joe Lippery on the Twitter. Okay. Cool. Great. I'm always around there, Great and job. I like it. I like it. I <laughs> like. Well, everybody can find us on <laughs> Third Person Podcast on YouTube, of course. Write in the comments below. Let us know what you thought of this interview. It's such a great, great Come say hi to Giovanni. He's yes. going to watch the video back. He's, he wants to see everyone to say hi to him, right? That's right. And That's I'll right. say hi to you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Check us out at Third Person uh, Pod on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter as well. And don't forget to have a listen to this interview if you'd like on iTunes. And uh, finally, thank you to everyone in the Facebook group, everyone who uh, questions we read questions. and the questions we didn't get a chance to get to. We apologize. We tried to incorporate everybody's questions. Uh, you know, many people had the same type of questions, so we tried to incorporate it. Um, I think Giovanni answered everyone's questions. Um, so I'll put the link to that Facebook group in the in the description as well. And also, um, if if you don't know, we do have a petition right now going to get the cast to uh, New York Comic Con. It's a way to yeah. promote the show uh, to get to get people to see the work that Giovanni does and everyone that that works with him. Yes. All the cast. We want this show to go out. We love the show. As you can see, it's not just the people who act in it. It's everyone that allows Set the actors to do their jobs yep. to the the yep. best of their ability. 
like like Giovanni right here. So guys, please go look at that petition uh, and support the show. Tell someone about the show, and and that's all I'm gonna say. So once again, Giovanni, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We we loved having you on. One last thing: if the cast go to the Comic Con, I'm definitely gonna go wherever I am. Great. I then, just, then, I then go. we're gonna see you there. We're we're gonna <laughs> see you there. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. All thank right, you. take care. Anytime. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching. If you want more Into the Badlands content, please check out our playlist up there in the top left. And if you're like me and you love the 80s, why not check out the Retro Squat YouTube channel? Or you can click one of the videos right here.